Hi everybody. Today I would like to do an unboxing video. I've received this uh, romantic tarot oh, maybe a month or so ago and I have not had a chance to get to it. I could not believe when I saw it on my shelf that I hadn't even unwrapped it yet. So I thought, hey, what better opportunity than to do an unboxing? <laughs> and I did receive this from Amazon.com. Uh, so let's get right to it. I'm going to get the plastic wrap off here. Oops, a little additional music and no extra charge there. I can't believe I hadn't opened this. This is a low scarabeo. So this is a, a nice uh, flip top box. Nothing too special. Just your regular flip top. Set the box aside, okay. We've got the cards, again encased in plastic. Got our little white book here. All right, let's get this open. All right, the Romantic Tarot. And this is your typical Los Carabello book. It's uh, there's a little blurb about the Romantic Tarot itself. If love is a carriage, romanticism is the horse that draws it along secret roads, guided by the breath of the lovers. The deck of Romantic Tarot does exactly the same thing. It guides the carriage along the roads of love. Each individual card transmits emotions, clarifies doubts, and gives the lovers advice. So, um, and they go on to say, the setting is late 19th century and dawning of the 20th century in four European cities considered to be the ideal settings for romantic love. Venice, Vienna, Rome, and Paris. Each of the four suits of the minor arcana were associated with the city that, more than any other, is in keeping with its symbolic and allegorical value. So the chalice cards, which represent positive sentiments, but which, but which when reversed can reveal dark or hidden sides, are set in Venice. Oh, I like that. Venice associated with water. And their color is the color of the city of the eternal carnival, golden yellow. The wand cards, always associated with strength and ambition, find their ideal setting in Vienna, and their myriad shades of blue are the color of the waltzes of love they represent. Hmm. Waltzes of love. Well, it's a deck focused on love, but I never associate wands with love personally, but hey, I guess you've got to readjust your thinking a little bit when you have a theme deck like this. Okay, the power of money and enterprise lies instead within the pentacle cards. So the Rome of popes and aristocracy of commoners and street urchins is the city of this suit where even the most romantic love still keeps its feet on the ground and its head on the bottom line. Its color is green. Finally, the energy and vitality of the wands closes this circle with Paris as the ideal stage and the red of the flowers tossed to the ballerinas of the Moulin Rouge is the dominant hue of libertine and pleasure-seeking love. In the same way, the 22 major arcana were associated with corresponding cities and colors so that the symbol and the allegory they contain are evident at first sight. Chalices, Venice, yellow, the duality of sentiments, swords, Vienna, blue, pride and ambition, pentacles, Rome, green, the common sense and personal gain, wands, Paris, red, the superficiality of the amorous passion. So there you have, there you have it. So it's not a basic uh, rider weight typical deck, I don't believe. Let me see here. Eight is justice instead of strength. Eleven is strength. So we've got that flip, and then, let me see here, the court cards are knave, knight, queen, and king. So I can't really say that it's um, of a particular style, it looks like they've kind of created their own style with this deck. 
And just like the Los Scarabeo books for all the other decks, it's very small amount of information, but the book looks pretty fat because it's in several different languages. Okay, Romantic Tarot, artwork by Julia Masalia. Okay, and this deck was produced in 2014. And I'm just getting around to looking at it. That's just not right. And we have an invitation to check out tarotassociation.net. Ooh, look at the back, so beautiful. Red roses, very pretty. And they're reversible, if that's important to you. That's very pretty. There's a very small margin of border. And there's a little margin of border on the cards themselves that's a little bit distracting. We've got a crown up there to indicate a court card, it looks like. So what I'm going to do is take a minute to arrange these so that I can present them quickly. Oh, here's another uh, title card. Okay. You right well, as it turns out, I didn't have to rearrange anything. The cards are already arranged right out of the box. We've got the Major Arcana. Here we've got the Fool. Interesting. We've got birds underneath. Interesting. You know, I thought I saw... Oh, this is just a... I was thinking that was going to be the Fool for this deck. But no, that's just a... Low Scarabeo ad. Okay, that's more of a typical fool than this one. So we're looking at Victorian uh, pictorializations here. The Magician. Now these cards just say, they're numbered, but they don't uh, tell you the name of the card, so you have to know that. So this is kind of not really a beginning deck, but for an intermediate reader. The Magician. Cool. He's got his tools. Cup, sword, wand, pentacle. Nice. Here we have the High Priestess. Isn't she lovely? It's a beautiful card. She's got her book, her throne. Nice. Here we have the Empress. That is a lovely card too. Got her dogs. She really is an empress. There's the imperial theme here. Looks like a palace of some sort behind her. Here we have the emperor. Looking very much in control there. The hierophant. The lovers. Very nice. The canal in Venice there. Here we have the chariot. I like that chariot. Look at the oxen have their crowns of uh, fruits there. Very nice. Very harvesty theme. Now I guess this is strength. According to the book, it said eight was justice. Looks more like a strength card to me. There's the lady and the lion and the guy's indication here that he's trying with all his strength to move that. Oh, interesting. Maybe the book is not correct. Here's the hermit. Very nice. I like these cards. They're very attractive, very soft, very pleasant, very restful. Here's the world, or I'm sorry, this is the um, the wheel. And we have justice, it is 11. I think the book goofed up. So it is typical Rider Waite um, in how the cards are arranged. It's an interesting justice. Look at her scale. She's got Victorian hat and flowers. Very interesting. I like it. The Hanged Man, number 12. 
It's a Houdini. Very clever. Very clever. Death. Nice temperance. There she's mixing the fluids. Like a pub. Very nice. The devil. The tower. The star. Sort of, uh, it is a star in that it's a depiction of the shape of a star, but it's not a star per se. It's a sundial, actually, so that's kind of confusing to me. It's not really a star star, but oh well. The moon. Very romantic. The sun. Anyway, this is a really pretty sun card. Judgment. And the world. I took just a moment out there to rearrange the cards so that we could compare. I like to compare all the numbers that are the same in each suit, like compare all the aces, all the twos, so you can get an idea of what they look like. So chalices, pentacles or coins, wands, oh look at that, they've got a garter on there, cute. And here we have swords. Here are the twos, two of cups or chalices, two of pentacles, and they've got the element or the, uh, they've got the indicator for the suit at the bottom of the card, wand, sword, coin, chalice, and the number at the top. Two of uh, coins. Two of Wands, Two of Swords. What I really like about this deck is the softness of the colors. So it is very romantic. Artistically it's romantic. Here we have the Three of Swords, Three of Wands, High Drama, Three of Coins, the strong man there, and Three of Chalices. Here we have our fours, four of cups, four of coins, four of wands. Isn't that a nice four of wands? I love that. And the four of uh, swords. Taking a little break with the four of swords there. Here we have our fives, five of swords, oh look at the swans, five of wands, five of coins, and five of chalices. A little bit of a fight there, two women fighting over the guy, or maybe he's uh, been discovered, and they're both after him now. Here we have the sixes. Six of Cups, Coins, that's really a pretty Six of Coins. Six of Swords over here, and Six of Wands. And these cards really have their own feel. I, I really don't get much of a Rider weight sense from them in most cases. Like Six of Wands, 
this sort of these sixes sort of are conflated to me this uh, normally you would think of the six of swords as the floating away image on the boat and the uh, six of um, six of wands would be a more sense of victory this is more like the traditional six of swords would be depicted and this is a unique depiction for the six of swords the couple in front of the piano and they're uh, apparently enjoying a musical interlude there I like these sixes they're all very interesting cards you can look at these cards and really get a lot of new depth and meaning out of them now on to the sevens the seven of swords very interesting you kind of wonder what she's got planned for this dinner party seven of wands seven of coins and the seven of uh, seven of chalices costume party where they've got their faces hidden very interesting way to depict that okay we'll move on to the eights Eight of Coins, Eight of Cups, Eight of Wands, and the Eight of Swords. It'd be interesting to spend a little time. I, I don't have the time right now to really go over each card in depth. But you can see they're very interesting. They've got a lot of uh, depth and meaning in each card. The author and the artist took a lot of time to create these, and I think they really did a wonderful job. Your intuition can really go wild with these cards. Here we have the nines, nine of swords, nine of wands, nine of coins, and the nine of cups. Here we have the tens, ten of swords, wands, coins, chalices. Hmm. Love all the cats in that chalice card. He's serenading his lady with the flute. Very sweet. And here we have the knaves. I personally think this deck would be really good for relationship readings or love readings because all the cards have that sort of a focus. Here we have the knights. We've got horses in all the cards so you can be able to recognize them that way. Plus they've got the little horse head up top here. Gosh, I love that knight of swords. Isn't that cute with the feathers? really something and let's take a look at our Queens oh I love how the Queen of Swords is done too I like the swords in this deck they're very well done Queen of Wands very dramatic lady Queen of Pentacles opulence and the Queen of Cups Kind of a little strange looking get up on her head there. Of course all of these uh, all of these cup suit cards have kind of a theme of a masked ball where you have the elusive mask on your face nobody knows who you are. That's sort of an interesting take. Now let's look at the Kings. There are our kings, all looking very regal. Pentacle with his green. Wand with the red and the incense. Oh no, that's a cigar. <laughs> He's got lamps lit down there to kind of carry through the fire theme. The king of cups pouring something into the cup there. Liquor it looks like of some sort. And then the king of swords. 
So a very interesting deck. All in all, I like it. As I said, I think it would be great for relationship readings and, you know, most problems in life can be brought down to relationships and a lot of interpersonal uh, interactions. So I think this deck is going to be good for a lot of those type of readings. Let's see how they are here as far as shuffling. Pretty good. Not bad. The cards are a little long, hard, kind of a little bit difficult for a smaller hand like mine to shuffle them, but not too bad. You could rifle shuffle, I'm sure. Okay, well this is my quick walkthrough of the deck. I didn't spend a lot of time on any one card, but you could spend a lot of time on these cards just looking at them. They're very beautiful, they're very soft, they're very romantic. So enjoy your romantic tarot. I know I'm going to.